This video is sponsored by Factor. Around a year ago, I converted my GPS-guided catamaran tugboat into a long-range autonomous platform by adding a 5G cellular data link with a live feed camera. In this video, I'm going to attempt my longest autonomous boat mission yet. The goal is to circumnavigate Bainbridge Island, which will be a 56-kilometer or 35-mile journey. Aside from the distance, this mission will be extra challenging because it's the first time I've ever tried something like this in ocean water. That means extra corrosion from salt and more seaweed to get tangled in the props. I did build these prop protector plates that will hopefully help redirect the seaweed away from the propellers, but they've never really been put to the test, so who knows if they will work. The previous time I drove this boat, a little bit of water had leaked through the shafts. Because of that, I decided to install some little bilge pumps that are controlled by relays, that are controlled by Arduinos, that are controlled by a liquid level sensor. So when it detects that the water level gets high enough, the pumps turn on and drains the hole. Pretty slick. I wasn't sure how much cell service there would be on the other side of the island, so I installed an RFD900X that would allow me to connect directly to the autopilot over 900 MHz, just in case the l site Halo didn't have cell service in certain locations. Let's pause right there. This video has some ADHD. We're going to be bouncing around a little bit. Before continuing on with the autonomous boat, we need to focus our attention on the support vessel, which is my Boston Whaler. In my previous video of this boat, I went on a 125 mile camping trip powered by nothing but the sun. That trip was a great way to get a feel for what long-range solar boating is like, and one of the things I learned is that if I do anything like this again in the future, I'm going to want a more efficient boat hull. This boat is designed for stability at planning speeds, not efficiency at displacement speeds. So in this video, I'm going to convert it back to what it's designed for, and then I'm going to use it as a support vessel to monitor my autonomous drone boat as it attempts its longest waypoint mission yet, through treacherous ocean waters. So, if you're only here for the autonomous drone boat stuff, then you can skip ahead to that part. But for now, let's continue with the Boston Whaler saga. So after my Lake Roosevelt trip, I knew I wanted a proper engine for this boat, but I was still really curious as to whether these two electric e-foil motors were capable of getting this 13-foot Boston Whaler hull up on plane. Previously, I had only run these motors on a 12S battery, which is around 50 volts. But before switching to a gas motor, I wanted to do one last test with an 18S battery, which is around 75 volts. To get this much voltage, I'm running each motor on three 10 amp hour 6L LiPo packs in series. Upon going to full throttle, it was clear that the boat had more power, but it wasn't immediately obvious whether or not it was up on plane. I think this was just because the boat was so lightweight. The electric motors and little drone batteries weigh much less than any gas motor that would typically go on this boat. I mean, just look at how tiny these batteries are. They're the only thing powering this whole boat. Previously, with the 12S battery, I was able to get 4500 watts out of both motors combined. With the new 18S batteries, the total power draw went up to 5700 watts. So the question is, is that enough power to get us up on plane? According to the internet, the definition of on plane is when the stern wash separates from the transom. And here you can clearly see that happening. So yes, we're up on plane. It was just kind of hard to tell at the time, because this boat is so lightweight that it wasn't really going that fast, despite being up on plane. That was actually faster, for sure. If we look at our GPS speed here, you can see that we got up to 4 meters per second, which is 7.8 knots. The hull was getting up on plane at even slower speeds than that, probably around 6 knots. The funny thing is, the speed limit in the no-wake zone here is 7 knots, so I could be up on plane, in the no-wake zone, without breaking the speed limit, which is pretty hilarious. That goes to show just how lightweight the boat was at this point. Here's the VESC telemetry. You can see we were up to 125 phase amps and 2800 watts per motor. I was also using these new B-series props for this test that were 3D printed on the Formlabs Form 3 Plus. That probably helped us get up on plane too, since they're better than my old FDM printed props. I find it pretty incredible that these resin 3D printed propellers can handle almost 4 horsepower each without braking. I was very impressed. So despite our success with the electric motors, they're still not very practical to have on this type of hull. Luckily, a friend was selling this 50 horsepower 4-stroke to Hatsu outboard for pretty cheap. The only catch was, it didn't work. This motor was previously mounted on the exact same Boston Whaler model that I have, but then they crashed into a pier piling at night and broke the boat in half. Apparently, the motor never went underwater, but it still wouldn't start, so Colin and I decided to try and fix it. At first we thought there was something wrong with the electrical system or the ignition, since the starter motor would only turn on intermittently. We opened up the throttle and replaced the neutral limit switch and the ignition, and neither of those seemed to do anything. We even took apart the wiring harnesses and looked for bad connections. And then this happened. I spent almost a day and a half trying to figure out what's wrong with this. Look at this battery cable. Ugh. This is what happens when water gets inside the electrical cables. They're completely corroded away. Oh my gosh. Wow. Look at that. Dude, you should snort some of that. See what happens. There's barely any copper left in that thing. After replacing the battery cable, we were able to try starting the engine, but it still wouldn't run. 
We determined there must be something wrong with the fuel system. I removed the fuel injection pump assembly and found this inside. There was corrosion everywhere. Water had definitely gotten inside and ruined the fuel pump. The OEM replacement was like $500, so I replaced it with a $40 street bike fuel pump and... Oh yeah! It worked! Next it was time to mount this steering console in the boat, so I had to do some carpentry. This includes the cutting, and the sanding, and the varnishing, and the screwing. I had to get new hydraulic lines for steering and fill those with fluid. Next it was time to mount the motor on the boat. I was using a come along tied to the balcony as an engine hoist. I actually ended up mounting this motor on 3D printed solid plastic wedges, since the transom is curved on this boat, but the motor is flat. I also printed a TPU cushion to protect the gel coat and fiberglass on the top of the transom. I know some people are going to think this 3D printed stuff is sketchy, but the weight of the motor is actually being supported with big steel bolts. And I had to drill new holes through the transom for those. I also had to replace the trailer wheel bearings, drain the engine oil, drain the lower unit gear oil, pump new gear oil in, cut some carbon fiber plate on the step craft, use that to mount the throttle, and with that we were ready for a test drive. This guy converted his snowmobile trailer into a boat. Pretty hilarious. For the maiden voyage, my dad and I took the boat through the Ballard Locks, which allows you to go from Lake Washington out into the Puget Sound, which is connected to the ocean. It's the same body of water where I'll do the autonomous boat mission in the second half of this video. This hull is rated for a maximum of 40 horsepower, and that was 50 years ago when they apparently used to measure horsepower at the crankshaft. With these newer motors, they measure it at the prop, and this is a 50 horse motor, so the hull is actually probably overpowered by about 15 horsepower or so. Of course, the extra power isn't really an issue, but the extra weight is a little bit of an inconvenience. To make things worse, I have a big 14 gallon gas tank, which is definitely bigger than it needs to be. With all this weight in the back, waves will go over the transom when I'm stopped in high seas, or when the boat is decelerating to a stop and the stern weight catches up. But I did put a bilge pump back there, so it's not too big of an issue. I think ideally, I would have gone with a lighter 30 or 40 horse engine, but I got a great deal on this 50 horse, so I'm sticking with it. One of the big benefits of having such a powerful engine is that I can pull up wakeboarders with power to spare. That's pretty impressive for a 13 foot boat with 3 people in it. After going on a few shakedown outings to make sure the engine wasn't going to fall off, it was time for some boat camping with the boys. We loaded up the whaler and the Zodiac with all our gear and set out for Blake Island, which is a state park. Ansel busted out the Freefly Ember to get these sweet slow-mo shots. I'm sure there will be plenty of people that are sad to see me converting this boat from electric to gas, but it's just so much better and more practical with the Tahatsu motor. I think electric boat motors have their place, but this specific hull just isn't it. Boats are terribly inefficient at high speeds, so you need a power source with high energy density. And gasoline is just so much more energy dense than a battery. What batteries do have is power density. That's why this boat was able to get up on plane, powered by nothing but these relatively tiny batteries. And why electric cars can accelerate so quickly. But for applications requiring a lot of power for a long period of time, like a speedboat, gasoline is simply far superior. At least for now. Electric boats do make sense when you're dealing with low speed displacement hulls. When I had solar panels on this boat, I was able to cruise all day long at just over 3 knots, and even into the night with nothing but what the solar panels provided. And that was even with this planing hull that's inefficient at displacement speeds. If I had used an efficient displacement hull for that solar project, I could have gone much faster and further than I did with this hull. I'd like to revisit solar boating again in the future, but my driveway is only big enough for one boat, so we're sticking with gas for now. Once I start on a big project like this, it's all I can think about. There's no room in my brain to think about going to the grocery store, and that's why I love Factor. Factor lets you avoid the chopping, prepping, and cleaning that comes with cooking, while still getting the flavor and nutritional quality you need. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy, and then get back to doing whatever you like to do. Sign up for Factor, and you get to choose from over 35 weekly flavor-packed meals that promote a healthy lifestyle. This month, I tried some of their Protein Plus meals, like this Chipotle rubbed pork chop. Factor meals come in a refrigerated box with ice packs, so you never have to worry about thawing them out or freezer burn like those frozen meals from the grocery store. Just pop them in the microwave for two minutes and they're ready to enjoy. Okay guys, today we're gonna eat some green pepper and beef casserole. Let's put it in the microwave. First impressions are that it has a great aroma and the flavor mm, is divine. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code RCTestFlight50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Now back to the video. The green beans are just succulent. Okay, back to the autonomous boat. Previously, I was running it on four of these Relyon 10 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. 
For this mission, I need more capacity, so I'm adding two sketchy old batteries here to the top of the boat. These are the exact same batteries I used on my autonomous solar-powered field rover back in the day. One is made of some puffy 24 amp hour lipo cells from a crashed drone battery, and the other is made from around 100 18650 cells soldered together. In order to be able to run three batteries of different chemistry together in parallel, I made this little Arduino with a voltage divider and relay. The iron phosphate batteries start off at around 14 volts, and when they drop down to 12.8 volts, the relay opens and connects the lipo and lion cells into the circuit. Super janky. You should probably never do this, but whatever. It's an undemanned boat, and all these batteries together should hopefully give us the capacity we need to go 35 miles. I've got this vessel tracking app going right now, and it doesn't look like there's any boats that could be a big risk other than that cruise ship. <laughs> oh shit, I didn't see that one. Damn. Yeah, that could be a bit of an issue. Uh, huh. Well. Okay, so I just set my speed really low until I can make sure that it's not going to hit that cruise ship. Okay, I think we're going real slow now. 0 0.5 meters per second. The cruise ship has passed. Oh, there's another ship out there too. Whoa, that's a container ship. I didn't even see that one. When I did the first 5G cellular mission with the L-Site Halo, I was able to monitor the mission from a coffee shop, which was pretty cool. But doing this in the Puget Sound would be unwise, due to all the commercial boat traffic and seaweed. So for that reason, I'm going to be monitoring it from my Boston whaler. But that idea got off to a rough start. I made the classic mistake of forgetting to put in the drain plug before launching. When I got back to the boat from parking the trailer, it was half sunk. It's a good thing this is a foam filled hull. Otherwise, I would have swamped my brand new used motor. There's another cruise ship. There's so many of these things out here. Looks like there's a fishing boat over there. I'm not sure what that light is over there on the horizon. That must be a big fishing boat out there. It's not the sunrise. It kind of looks like it, but it's definitely not. Okay, so I got to find my autonomous boat now before it gets hit by a, one of those things. My uh, power supply for the day got waterlogged. Now it's reading 0% on the battery, so that ain't good. Whoa, I'm driving into a boil. There's a bunch of fish jumping or something. Well, the boat is upright. That's a good sign. Let's see where we're at now. Not too far offshore. I can see the rainbow light on the boat. That's it, right out there. So luckily I don't see any big boats coming through the channel here as our little autonomous fella enters the middle. So all this data, being the telemetry data and the live video here, is coming through the cellular link on the Halo. So then I have my phone's hotspot connected to the computer here. So that's how the computer is getting Wi-Fi. And that's how I can see the data. So this thing has unlimited range as long as it's within cell service. Pretty slick. Tragically, it seems the EF Delta here will not output AC power since the bottom part got waterlogged. I bumped the speed up to 1.8 meters per second on the boat. Um, I'm going to turn this computer off now because I need to save battery since I don't think I'll be able to charge it. We're just putting along here into the blue yonder. Oh wow, it's starting to get light already. I'm picking up telemetry data on the TX16S here as well, because I've got that set up to communicate with the RD pilot. So that's cool. We got a bogey. Hopefully they don't run into the boat. The boat's over there. That boat just passed behind my boat, so my boat is much closer to me than I thought. So I just gave her some gas, snuck up on it here, but I, <laughs> I'm hesitant to get too close because it's an autonomous boat. I feel like I just need to let it do its thing, you know, keep my distance. I don't want to be a helicopter parent. It's going to be a nice day. Looks like there's a fog bank over there, but no clouds above us. Wow, the, the water level sensors for the inside of the hull are green, and that means there's no water in the hulls. That's good. So that red light in the middle means that it's still running on the LIFE PO4 batteries, and it has not yet switched to the lithium batteries on top. It's not going very fast, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to try and increase the maximum PWM in RD Pilot. Wow, that is a big ship. About to enter into the fog. Spooky. The first thing that I noticed here upon connecting is that the speed is at 0.4 meters per second, which is way lower than it should be. It should be at like 1.8. So I think that probably means that there's seaweed in the props. Let's go have a look. I just took it out of auto mode, so it's just floating now. Uh, seaweed? I don't see seaweed. Huh. Weird. I'll put it back into auto mode. Let's see. On the road again. What the heck is that big red thing ahead of me? The fog is closing in. Highly suspicious. It's still only going 0.5 meters per second. But 
the waypoint speed is set to 1.8. That's weird. See that? That's a big problem for a little autonomous boat. There's a lot of junk in the water out here. Probably need more robust prop guards. I can't see anything on the props from here. So this is Bainbridge Island here, and the mission I have planned it drives all the way around it. The boat just got devoured by the fog. <laughs> I no longer see it. I drove ahead, and now it's gone. I wonder what this barge is for. I mean, presumably it's for cargo, but I have no idea why it would be here. This is just like a residential cove, it looks like. That thing is huge! Wow. Okay, I need to go find the autonomous boat now. I don't have any sight of it. It should be coming this way. Oh, I think I actually see it out there. Oh yeah, there it is. Look at that. Porpoises. Or dolphins or something. Ooh, spooky. That thing just popped out of the fog. So the bilge pump lights on the left hull are out. That's not great. I wonder why. It just went through a wake and took a wave over the bow. If I can't get this laptop charging, we're in bad shape because that's like the primary way I need to monitor the boat, so. Yeah, this is important. Let's try to unplug this big connector, see what happens. That thing's getting pretty close to shore over there. There's also these boats ahead that are moored out here. I hope it doesn't hit them. It just turned. It looks like it's starting to make its way around them. There's a lot of dolphins over there. I should send the drone up. Yeah. The fog has finally rolled in and I can't find the boat. So I'll keep looking with my eyeballs for a little bit and if I can't find it with those, then I'll see if the computer has enough battery left to locate it. Oh, actually, there it is right there. It's pretty close to the shore here. I think uh, the imagery data that I was looking at when I planned the mission must have shown high tide. So I assumed that it was gonna be further out from shore, but now it's low tide, so it's closer in. There's a lot of current in here. We're up to 1.9 meters per second. Um, it's kind of like a river right now because the tide is flowing in under the bridge. We're getting a free ride now. The bridge is coming up and there's a boat going under it. I wasn't sure exactly where the bridge pilings were, so I kind of planned the mission right towards the center of it. So we're kind of <laughs> heading straight for that other boat. Oh well, it doesn't look like it'll be a problem. Oh yeah, you can really see how much current there is in the wake behind that buoy. That, it's like a freaking river. That ain't good. There's smoke coming out of it. It's definitely ruined. Our dear little boat there kind of looks like it's gonna run into these things, whatever they are. I think we're good. Just missed them. There was a seal checking out the boat. Yeah, I can see him poking his head up behind it. I keep hearing pops and more smoke come out of that thing. Oh, there's another, oh, oh. <laughs> I have a rope tied to it so that I can throw it in the water if I need to. I feel like it's not the battery that's popping because the battery is still reading 56 volts. I think it's just electrical components that are popping. What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Oh, they went right by. That boat's going awfully fast. Oh, and it passed my boat. Still to this day, I've never seen someone stop and take a closer look at one of my autonomous boats. Bowie? What the hell? Where'd that freaking boat go? I lost it. My brief check-in with Mission Planner said that the battery was at 11.1 volts, and if that's true, that's pretty low. <laughs> I wouldn't expect it to last all that much longer. And apparently it's still over there, even though I cannot see it at all, and I can't even see it through the long lens. So I guess I'll just sit here and see if it shows up. Look at that. There's a seal going to inspect the boat. Also, there's a yacht that's coming straight for me. There's another yacht coming straight for me that way. Seal's right behind it, ha! 
Oh, he probably hears the PWM of the motors and is like, what the heck is that? That guy decided to go right in between me and the shore there. It's a pretty small gap, kind of surprising. Oh, there's so much seaweed in the props. Oh no, can you see that? Oh, they're green. No wonder the battery's almost dead. Look at what we were pulling around. Got a freaking sushi burrito here. There's more, Jesus. Wow, that's a lot of extra drag. I can't believe it was even moving. Okay, got the props all cleared off. Let's uh, push it back out there and then put it into auto mode. See what full throttle looks like with the clean props. That's way faster than it was going. Look at that, it's hauling ass. Okay, it's going back into auto mode. That's where all my battery voltage went, into spinning that seaweed into a circle. Ugh, less than five minutes later and there's already seaweed on the prop, I can tell. That's a lot already, holy crap, there's a ton already, Jesus. This is why autonomous missions are tough out here, because there's freaking Christmas trees in the water. So it looks like we're getting pretty close to halfway done with the mission. I don't think we'll make it the whole way though, because of that seaweed screwing up our efficiency. I know, I know, everyone's gonna be saying, why don't you put solar panels on it? Well, it used to have solar panels. Plus, if there's no seaweed on the props, it has enough battery power to go all day long. So you don't really need solar panels, unless you're trying to cross the Atlantic or something, which I'm not. I mean, that would be cool, yeah, but you need something way more robust than this boat for that to work. It's going through some pretty dirty water. I'll have to check and see if there's anything on the props. That dude was checking the boat out with his binoculars. Uh-oh. Whoa. Oof. Jeez. So I'm coming up on a Y in the channel. If I go that way, I go back to Seattle. If I go this way, I go to where they keep the aircraft carriers. I'm in a spot with some weird current convergence going on. There's like whirlpools and some eddy currents and stuff. So I'm gonna send the drone up and see what it looks like from above. I've also been hearing some dolphins surfacing, so I'll look for those too. Oh, there's one. I just got a fat whiff of burning battery scent. Whoa, that guy's not messing around. So I'm keeping an extra close eye on the boat in this channel here because it's a ferry lane. Uh, ferries go in and out of here, and so do big aircraft carriers, I think. My boat's off right now, and I'm just drifting with the current. That's some fast current. This guy's going upstream. It's a tough battle. Got lunch going here. Mmm, spaghetti. Look at that jellyfish. Wow. This could be a real situation. That ferry does not look like he's turning very fast, and my boat's right there going that way, presumably gonna hit a waypoint and turn that way pretty quickly. I might need to take manual override control here. That would be a bad fate for my little boat. That looks fine. I'm gonna go back into auto mode. Wow, that thing is huge and it's going so fast. Those things rip. Yeah, they're not messing around. Going into the wind and into the current, I'm only doing 0.6 meters per second. Not great. Probably also have some seaweed stuck on there. Not sure. Oh, that looks like one of the high speed water taxis. Oh, that LED on the far bow right there is red. That means there's water in the hole. Oh yeah, I can see water kind of trying to come up that tube. There must not be enough water to actually get the pump primed and flowing. And there's the big ferry going along. There's something going on over there. Now we're starting to get some wind chop as we round this point up here and start getting the northern winds coming at us. Oh, it's shallow here. I can see the bottom. This thing is getting pretty thrashed by the waves. Oh, there's another one. Or, 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 or. That one's trying to get up. Well, that one has a tag on. Oh, he made it. Wow. They're just basking in the sun, soaking up the rays. These things are like meat torpedoes.
I just took these two batteries off because they were getting pretty wet and they're not sealed at all. So uh, we'll see how long it lasts with the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Once the voltage drops enough, the BMSs will just turn them off. So I don't think it'll last too much longer. Oh, it looks like it just shut off. I guess the BMS finally turned off the batteries. Huh, I wonder what that thing's all about. Yeah, the BMS is finally tripped. So all the electronics on the boat are off. That's a wrap for this mission. Okay, I'm gonna put this thing on my boat and then head back. This is gonna be a bumpy ride. So the Puget Sound won this time. Failing to complete the mission was a bit of a bummer, but at least now I have a good goal to aim for with future autonomous boat projects. Obviously I'll need to figure out a new propulsion method since underwater propellers have proven to be too vulnerable to seaweed. Even in the past when I've tried out much tighter prop guard cages, they've still let fine seaweed through. You'll have the same problem with a water jet, like what jet skis use, unless you use a really fine mesh to cover the intake. But doing that is terrible for efficiency. But don't worry, I have some ideas. That's what the next video of this boat will be about. Here I discovered that if you hop behind a big yacht, it makes your ride much smoother. Whoa, that boat just came out of the Ballard Locks. That's a big boat. So it was a bummer that the EF Delta got ruined because these things are super expensive. I disassembled it and it was clear that most of the circuit boards had fried, but luckily all the battery cells were still fine, so I can totally just wire up my own BMS and use this battery for a different project in the future. Now let's have a look inside the hulls. Oh god, that's so much water. Why you no work little pump? This is probably the culprit right here. No wonder if we can stop working, the liquid level sensor is completely corroded. I feel like that's a bad design. I'm very impressed that these motors kept working even though they were partially submerged. You can see there's less water in this front compartment but there's still quite a bit. I mean the motor was certainly like a third submerged. And also the autopilot kept working even though presumably this motor was flipping water all over the place. It was just super humid in here, so that's pretty impressive. How about this one? Huh, not much water in there at all. One's almost completely dry. Ooh. It does smell like burnt out electronics though. Aha. It looks like something lit on fire on the back of the Arduino. Do you see that brown right there? Oh yeah, that's the culprit right there. The voltage regulator or something on the back of the Arduino. Let's see if the one in the other hull is roasty too. Let us see. Oh, yep, that one looks burnt out too. I'm guessing that's an over voltage problem. Or over current. I was using a digital out pin to drive these little um, relays. These are supposed to be logic level relays, but maybe they were pulling too much juice. Let's see if the pump can still do its job if I just plug it directly into a battery. Oh yeah.